Okay, so this should be the last Super Famicom I'm going to be taking a look at for this lot. So let's not waste any time. Let's get right into this repair. The strap on my camera was giving me issues, so I apologize for the shakiness here. So you could just barely make out that it passed all the tests. So next, what, what the burn-in test card does is it tests the PPU portion or the all the functions of the PPUs like mode 7, foreground layers, sprites, background layers, 3D scaling and scrolling. So right here in this shot, you can see that the Super Mario is green and glitched up. So there's definitely something wrong with this console. I actually don't know exactly what's wrong yet. So let me test with Donkey Kong to see if I can see any other graphical issues. So right here I do see a problem on the level select screen. The Donkey Kong sprite it has lines through it and it's not correct. So here's another example when the hardware fails on the Super Nintendo. It just doesn't fail in the same way. There's different things for di different problems, different solutions. So even that beaver there, the enemy, has lines through it and it's a bit yellow. So place your bets in the comment section down below. Do you think the PPU2 is bad or the PPU1? So for this repair, I'm actually going to start with the PPU2 because I'm crossing my fingers. I'm trying to get a console that has a bad PPU2, but I'm actually not certain what's wrong. This is just a hunch. So if you watch my previous videos, you know that I have these PPU2s in a part box. So this is the one I had on hand. In fact, I pulled it from the last console. So when I'm doing SMD work like this, I like to put solder all over the chip, sometimes a little bit too much, but then I can easily just wick it away with my iron. So the PPU2 didn't solve the issue, so now I'm going to be swapping the PPU1, hopefully then that will solve the issue. So to save some time, I've already pulled the chip off the board, and if swapping the PPU1 doesn't solve the issue, then I have to look at look for broken traces or perhaps one of the video RAMs are, are bad or the work RAM. So 
so right here my iron and my desoldering braid w wasn't cooperating and I actually tore one of the pads off the board so that's unfortunate so I gotta figure out how I'm gonna fix that So the pad that tore from the board goes straight across to the PPU2. So I'm going to add this chip into circuit and then I'll bridge the trace. So what I'm going to use is a component leg and I just clipped it to size so then I can position it from one pin to the other pin and this should work. So when I recorded this shot here, it was this was already later in the day, like five hours later, and I had to go somewhere. And then when I came back, I started recording and I realized the light was way off. But as you can see, I did put the bridge and now I'm going to test it now. So it seems like it was the PPU1 all along. So this console is working and it just goes to show you that these, these chips, they fail in many different ways. So that's it for this video. So subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video if you liked it. Comment down below. Share this with somebody. And once again, thank you for watching.